the RX Vega 64 directly from AMD. Um, so we are about to water cool it. And to do so, we are going to use an EKWB water block right here and a very nice and shiny golden EKWB backplate right there. And make sure that you have plenty of time because this is by far the most delicate uh, portion of this build. And first things first, we are going to remove the existing backplate of, of our video card by removing these six screws. Piece of advice here, we are going to remove a bunch more of them. So just in case you want to revert uh, those steps, make sure to uh, keep those screws in a safe place. And when I said a bunch more, I meant exactly 14 of them. And watch out for this white screw. By removing it, you will be voiding your card guarantee. Worth noting, some of those screws were pretty hard to remove. So make sure you apply the right amount of pressure and use the right uh, kind of screwdriver. Go particularly slow on the last four screws I am removing right now, the one on the metallic holder. And again, this white screw I'm removing will void our warranty. Our next step is to unscrew those four screws in order to remove the double deck IO shield of our video card. And we are going to use those screws again later on in our build, so make sure to put them aside in a secure and easy to find location. All right, here is a delicate part of our video. We are going to separate the fan from the logic board. And to do so, we are going to apply an opposite force on each of those components and make sure not to pull too hard because we still have a couple of plugs to detach from both sides. And please make sure to use your thumb to secure the base of the plug if it does not free itself easily. For the rest, simply follow the instructions on your screen and go slow. Finally, here is our open video card. On the left, the stock fan cooler, and on the right, the very expensive AMD Vega 64 logic board. Needless to say, be careful handling the logic board. Next step, we are going to remove those two screws in order to disassemble the double deck video card IO shield. And there is no arm in taking a closer look to our naked logic board. I always find them very, very good looking at this stage. Now we are going to put on the single deck IO shield, which was provided with our water block. Again, I think this is a brilliant addition. And we are going to use the four screws that we removed earlier from the double deck IO shield. And please do not over tighten them. Finger tight is quite enough. All right, this is getting serious. Using a Q-tip with a little bit of water or alcohol, we are going to clean our GPU die. No need to overdo it, mostly clean will be good enough. Next comes the most annoying part of this installation. We are going to put on all the thermal pads on the RAM and capacitors of our logic board. And in blue on your screen, I have marked the components we are going to start with. First, we are going to take the individual thermal pads which are provided with our water block and ever slowly remove the blue protective film on one side and then on the other. Next, we are going to place it on its designated component as delicately as we can. I know I made it seem very easy, but this is probably the most annoying part of the build, so make sure to remove uh, those protective film before placing them onto the different components. And do not be afraid of cutting as I did with the scissors to make sure they perfectly fit. And for the larger thermopads, uh, do not be afraid of using some sharp surfaces to separate uh, the film from the thermopad itself. Here I am finishing those four capacitors. And finally, we are going to put some thermo compound onto our three-way GPU. There are different uh, school of thoughts on how much we should be putting on there, but I'd rather be a little bit more generous than necessary. But that's me. And next, once again, a very delicate and potentially disastrous step. So make sure to go slow and to follow exactly what I'm doing. Here is our beautiful Radeon water block. And look at that. And we are simply going to place it, trying to align the screw razor with the screw holes of the logic board and try to turn it back sandwiched and let gravity does its job as it keeps both sides glued together. Next, we are going to secure both of the logic board and water block thanks to the provided screws. There is a reason why some of them are staying empty and that is for the back plate later on in the installation. Next, and making sure to equip every single screw with a plastic ring, we finally are going to secure both ports together. The last step of this video will be to install the beautiful EKWB backplate. And before doing so, we have to put the thermopads as shown on your screen. 
but you've been there and you've done that so you should be able to do that on your own and I'm just gonna lay back and listen to the music <laughs> Alright, awesome. Uh, final, final, final step, I promise. We are going to delicately put uh, the logic board onto its backplate and simply use the seven provided screws to secure them one onto the other. Not much to say here. Uh, I would simply warn on to getting your screwdriver to scratch the surface of your backplate, so just go slow. And here is a finished product, a beautiful Vega 64 about to be completely water-cooled. <laughs> the video card installation is very easy. We are going to remove the first position shield and simply place it onto the first available PCIe slot. If you are careful, very little should go wrong at this stage of the installation. Make sure to hear a little click coming from the locker mechanism of our PCIe slot and finally put back to some screw uh, to secure the whole shebang together. And we're done. Next step, tubing the water cooling system. 